So happy Friday. My name is Miss Patty, for those who don't know me, um, for Mrs. Marshall's class and Mrs. Potner's. I will be reading to you pictures of Hollis Wood um, for 10 minutes. So sit back and enjoy. And well, let's get started. So pictures of Hollis Woods. First picture, X. This picture, this picture has a dollop of peanut butter on one edge, a smear of grape jelly on the other, and an X across the whole thing. I cut it out of a magazine for homework when I was six years old. Look for the words that begin with W, my teacher Mrs. Evans had said. She was the one who marked in, marked in the X, spoiling my picture. She pointed. This is the picture of a family, Hollis. A mother, M, a father, F, and a brother, B, a sister, S. They're standing in front of their house, H. I don't see one W word here. I opened my mouth to say, how about W for with, or W for want, or W for wouldn't it be lovely, like the song the music teacher had taught us. But Mrs. Evans was at the next table by that time, shushing me over her shoulder. Hoo-wee, said the kid with dirty nails, who sat next to me. You don't know anything, Hollis would. I reached for my crayon and dug an X into her picture of a Snow White washing machine. Too bad you can't use it to get your hands clean, I said. When I think of my W picture deep inside my backpack under all the other pictures I've drawn, I think of that poor washing machine kid who cried over her ruined picture. And the frowning Mrs. Evans who told me to sit in the hall with a timeout T letter for the rest of that long afternoon. You don't deserve to be with the rest of us today, she said. I sat for a while looking at the Addy picture of a pointy mountain. Someday I would climb a mountain like that. I'd build a little house and maybe I'd have a horse that would live right in the house with me and a dog and a cat. When I saw the principal coming down the hall, I picked myself up and walked out the door. The woman I was staying with, I called her the lemon lady because of the way her mouth caved in, made me stay in the yard all weekend, all in the yard all weekend for that. I think you're so tough, she said. I'll show you tough. That foolish woman forgot that as long as I had a pencil and a paper, I'd get along. I drew her with her purse up lips and tied her picture to the tree for target practice with gravel from the path. When I think of my W picture, mostly I think of the Reagan's house and branches. I think of the old man and Izzy and their son, Stephen. All they needed to match my picture was the girl, G. And that's what I thought the morning I went away. <laughs> That's what I thought the morning I ran away from them. Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Friday. <laughs> but when I think <clears throat> of my W picture, mostly I think of the Reagan's house and branches. I think of the old man and Izzy and their son, Stephen. All they needed to match my picture was the girl, G. And that's what I thought the morning I ran away from them. Touching the great holly bushes, feeling their sharpness, and the sticky evergreen branches that hung over the dirt road leading to the town. I stopped to look up at the mountain, and then at the house half hidden in the trees, the gray porch tacked on the front, screens bellowing out, the chimney leaning, the two windows upstairs that had been my bedroom, and then in my bedroom, and the river in front. My river, the Delaware. That day I thought I'd never see any of it again, and never. And in my mind, I drew an X over all of them and over me too. Chapter one, <clears throat> the house was falling apart. I could see that from the car window, but it didn't bother me. After a while, the houses ran together, four now, now five. There was the greenhouse where the door didn't quite close. The wind blew in and up the stairs, rattling the window panes. The white house, crumbs on the table, kids fighting over a bag of Wonder Bread. The yellow house, City, a long-haired woman with braids, no rugs on the stairs, the loud sound of feet going up and down. Uh, the house in the branches, Stephen's house. But that was different. I never forget that one. Don't think about it, Stephen said in my head. I did that a lot. I pretended Stephen was right there next to me when I knew he was miles away in upstate New York. I wondered if he ever said, that, said to himself, what is Hollis, Hollis Wood doing right this minute? And did he put my words in his head. The driver turned off the motor. For a moment, we looked out at the trees. The leaves were just a tinge of red this October afternoon. We're here, Hollis, she said. A woman in sweats, 
a mustard stain on the front from the lot from the hot dogs we had eaten on the side of the road. The hot, those hot dogs were a mean lump in the middle of my stomach, splashing around through the mountain dew. She tried to walk all the way, or she tried to talk all the way, but I hadn't answered. I slumped in my seat, feet up on the glove compartment, wearing an ANS baseball hat with a brim, brim yanked low over my forehead. If someone looks into your eyes, I read it in a book one time, he'll see right into your soul. I didn't want anyone to see into my soul. I knew she was dying to tell me to get my sneakers off her dashboard, but she didn't. She was waiting to deliver her speech. I could hear her getting ready for it with a puff of breath. This can be a new start, Holly, a new place. She licked her finger and scratched at the mustard stain. No one knows you, you can be different. You can be good, you know what I mean? Maybe she gave that, gave that speech to every foster kid and every driver as she dumped them off like the UPS guy, dropping off packages on a busy day. But I didn't think so. I had looked into her eyes once, just the quickest look, and I had seen that she felt sorry for me, that she didn't know what to do with me. Too bad for you, mustard woman. I hugged a little of the worms crawl in, the worms crawl out. She was an art teacher, the mustard, the mustard woman, said, pointing to the house. Retired now. I've never met her, but every everyone at the agency says she's wonderful with kids. Her voice trailed off, but I knew she had meant to say, kids like you. I walked my feet up the dashboard so my knees came close to my chin. No one's been here with her for a while, but Emmy said it would be a good place for you. Emmy, the agency hotshot. She had probably said, what have we got to lose? A good place for an artist like you, Hollis, the muster woman said. Mr. Reagan, I drew in a deep breath, the old man. I closed my eyes as if I was ready to doze off. He wanted you to have a chance to work at your drawing. He said it would be a crime if you didn't. I tried to yawn, but then the front door opened. And a woman came out on the porch with a mangy orange cat one step, ahead of her, one step behind her. I didn't bother to give them more than a glance. What did I care what the woman looked like? But next to me, the mustard woman took a deep breath. I cut my eyes in the direction of the house. She's good at that. Seen everything without turning my head, without looking up, without blinking. I did blink that, of course I did. Anyone getting a first look at Josie Kale would do the same. It wasn't just she was movie star beautiful, or that she was wearing a blue dress made of filmy stuff that floated around her and rings on eight of her fingers. It was this, she had a knife in one hand. She held it in front of her so it caught, caught the glint of late afternoon sunshine and became a silvery light itself. Lordy, the muster woman breathed, breathed. I sat straight, sat up straight, wondering if I should open the car door and run or reach out to push the button down, locking myself in. The knife woman came close enough for me to see that the movie star face had dozens of tiny crisscross lines on the cheeks and across its forehead. But then she smiled and the lines around her mouth rearranged themselves. She leaned forward and put one hand on the car window. Hollis, she said, are you here then? I couldn't take my eyes off of her. I could feel a pencil in my hand moving across the, pa the paper, drawing her face, her eyes, the knife. I reached over the seat, grabbed my backpack, and was out the door, slamming it behind me. On the other side of the car, the mustard woman was out too. Tea, the movie star asked the mustard woman as if she were reading a grocery list. Coffee, lemonade, orange juice? The mustard woman shook her head. She was still thinking about the knife. I just wanted to get Hollis settled, she said uneasily. I'm settled, I said. We all stood there for another few minutes, the mustard woman trying to fill the space around us with talk. Then at last, she opened the car door again and was gone. Wanted to call me Josie? The movie star rubbed her forehead absently with the knife, knife handle. If you want to do the kale part, you say it kale, you know, like the vegetable. She jerked her head toward the cat, that kind of He's a little irritable sometimes. I followed her up the path and around to the back of the house. Henry came too, reaching up to stab my leg with one irritable claw. <laughs> Josie looked back over my shoulder. Hungry? I shook my head. The hot dogs were just settling in. Drop your things, she said, waving the knife. We'll get them later. In back of the house was a different world, a garden on the edge of the woods, woods so small I could see around them the houses on the next street. I lived here, Josie raised her eyebrow, since they've invented the spoon. Who did that anyway, I asked, trying her out. Her other eyebrow shot up. 
the knife and fork people, who else? I could feel a laugh coming as she waved her hand. This is my place. Carved tree branches were stuck in the dirt in front of the woods, some of them thicker than my arm, others almost pencil thin. All of them had faces and bits of grass or wreaths of flowers circled their wooden heads. I touched this one and that using two fingers, the ones I used to shadow in my own drawings. One of the figures had a filmy scarf around its neck and held a bird's nest in its bent arms. You, I asked. She patted the scarf and turned to look at me, head tilted. I pulled my hat down over my eyes and stared at her figures. She really was an artist. I'll make one for you, said Josie Kale, or Josie Kale said. We'll have to find the right piece of wood. I think there's one in the back. The shape of the head is there already. The nose sharp and the eyes, she stopped. But only if you stay. It will take weeks for me to do. Months, maybe. I tried to think of what to say. I never stayed anywhere for long before I ran. One morning I'd wake up and I've had enough. I'd grab my backpack and go. I'd hang out in the city, see a couple movies, or if the weather was nice, I'd head over to Jones Beach and sleep under the boardwalk. Sometimes it took them days to find me, but they never sent me back to the same place. The people in their houses had probably had enough of me too. Josie waited for me to answer. I raised one shoulder. I'm not sure. Henry and I will treat you like our best company for as long as you stay, she said. Henry crouched at the top of the path, eyes slitted, tail twitching or switching at me. I'm glad he's not a tiger, I said, feeling that laughter again. Josie's eyes danced. Maybe we'll go back and cut that piece of wood anyway. A table, leaned a table leaned against the back of the house, an old redwood with tools, a drill, an ax, a knife sharp enough to split hair. I reached for the ax, then followed Josie Cahill into the woods. And in my head, I told Stephen, I may just stay for a while. What do you think of that? Okay, so that is your 10 minutes of Pictures of Hollis Woods, grade six reading.